Here's what you need to build the robot working model hand. Drinking straws come in an amazing variety of diameters. The pink straw is the thinnest of them all. These thin straws were from a dollar discount store. You need five thin, flexible straws. Here's some other things that you can buy at a building center or hardware store. You will need a cartridge of 100% silicone rubber sealant and a dispenser. Also get a medium-sized nail. It's the best way to keep the leftover silicone from drying out. Understand that the project will span at least two days because depending on how thickly you apply the silicone, it will take at least 24 hours to cure. You will also need string. I use nylon twine, sometimes called mason's twine. I like the braided kind a little better than the twisted if I can get it. Do not use kite string or dental floss or other thin string because that would cut into the fingers. And you will need a single edge razor or X-Acto knife. It has to be really sharp, not some old blade lying around. Here are some things you will need that are probably around the house already. A sharp pair of scissors and soap, either solid or liquid. You'll need a breakfast cereal box or similar cardboard. You should use a pattern for at least your first hand. You can print it out from sciencetoymaker.org in the robot hand section. Carefully cut out the hand on the outside solid line. It's a little challenging between the fingers. Give it your best. You need five pieces of twine, each piece 22 inches or 56 centimeters. Generally, we don't cut nylon twine with scissors. We melt it. If you don't, it frays. Alternately, you can tape the ends. Cut out one big side of a cereal box. The next part of making the hand involves applying the silicone. The silicone sealant does several things. It holds different parts of the hand together, also, in our real hands, there are tendons in the back of our hands to straighten our fingers. But that gets complicated. In our simplified model, we'll use stretched silicone rubber to spring back and straighten the fingers. You will need to cut off the tip of the silicone cartridge before you can get anything out. Most dispensers have a built-in tip cutter. Notice, though, that I'm being pretty careful not to cut very much of the tip. You need a fine stream of silicone coming out of the nozzle to control it. So the closer you cut to the tip, the thinner the stream will be. Cut off enough to get a nail in, but no bigger. Don't forget that you have to puncture the foil seal the first time you use it. And all the dispensers have some way to relieve the pressure so the silicone doesn't keep oozing out. Make sure you know where that is and how to use it. Just before you use the silicone, apply a layer of soap to the print side of the piece of cardboard from the cereal box. The purpose of the soap is to keep the silicone from sticking to the cardboard. If it is liquid soap, don't add water. If using bar soap, Use as little water as you can and still be able to spread it. Silicone releases acetic acid as it cures. Acetic acid is the common name for ordinary vinegar. When you get silicone on your hands, and I do mean when, not if, be careful that you do not rub your eyes because the acetic acid will burn. Silicone is not easy to get off your hands because it's not water soluble. I have found the best way to get silicone off is to rub my hands with a dry towel first using lots of friction. Then, 
wash with soap and warm water. We will start not on the front of the hand where the straws are, but on the back of the hand where the string is embedded and anchored in silicone. So flip the pattern over. Notice that on the dark table, you cannot really see the print through the pattern. But when you put a light-colored surface behind it, you can see through. Once you start dispensing the silicone, you cannot stop halfway through the operation. You're going to lay down double beads of silicone. Each bead should be about as thick as a pen or pencil. I know I just said that you need to be able to dispense a thin bead of silicone, but on the back of the hand, the silicone beads must be as thick as a pen or pencil, so advance slowly and pile up the silicone. Don't skimp. This layer of silicone will make the fingers spring back after bending. Of course, your hand will get tired, but notice that most of the fatigue is in your forearm, where the muscles for your fingers are, which is the whole point of the project, right? Starting at the wrist, you need to lay the string on the silicone Push the string in the silicone completely and embed it as shown, kind of cover it up. You're anchoring the string in the silicone, so when people pull the string hard, it's not going to come out. Now pick up the cardboard and put the side with all the soap on it face down onto the silicone. Aim carefully. Gently tap all around so the cardboard makes contact with all the silicone and flattens the silicone slightly. Carefully flip the whole thing over. It might be a good idea to tap the paper down a little to flatten out the silicone, but stop when it starts to ooze out the side. Don't worry if a little squishes out. It's easy to trim later when it's hardened. Pull the straws so the bendy part stretches out. 